Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Health is Easy with Xtina. This episode is going to be about lunch, meal preppable lunch. So I'm going to be making two recipes in this video. The very first recipe I'm going to get started with is going to be using the crock pot and I will be doing buffalo chicken salad. This recipe is perfect for meal prep. Maybe you're not meal prepping like you used to and you're eating out more or you're just grabbing crap from the fridge, the freezer. We don't need to do that. We can meal prep still while we are working from home, while we are quarantined. So I am just using one chicken breast for this. Brian is not a fan of chicken salad, so I know that I will be the only one eating this. And so I'm just gonna make one serving. So if you do want to meal prep this in bulk for the week, I would just double it, triple it. Um, I will kind of, I will leave all of the instructions. If you do want to double or triple the recipe, I'll put that in the, the recipe below in the description box. Or if you're signed up to my email list, you'll get a downloadable recipe card. So all of that stuff will be all outlined in that recipe card in the description box below. So let's get started. This could not be easier. I am going to put this in the bottom of my crock pot. And I'm gonna wash my hands. Anytime you are touching chicken, you really wanna make sure you're washing your hands. I have, we need to add liquid because we want it to be shredded. The chicken salad is going to be shredded. So I have this buffalo sauce and I picked this up from Fresh Market. You can use any buffalo sauce though. You don't have to try to find this one. You can use Frank's Red Hot, their wing buffalo sauce would be perfect for this. And I just wanted to touch on sodium for a very quick second. As you saw in the first episode, I am someone that actually promotes the use of salt and sodium it's not bad for you but a lot of condiments especially hot sauce can be so high in sodium so the reason why I picked up this specific brand was because I did look at the nutrition facts on the back I you I would definitely check out the nutrition facts when you go to look for a buffalo sauce because some of them might have fat in there that you're like, oh my God, I didn't realize that this had so many calories because there's fat in here. Um, so this is zero calories. And I, I looked at the sodium. It's really tiny, so I'm just gonna read it to you, but the sodium is only 120 milligrams, which is really good because a lot of hot sauces will have three, four, 500 milligrams for like a tablespoon or even a teaspoon, so it's a lot. Um, so I just wanna point that out. Just take a, you know, a glance at the sodium when you're in the grocery store and just look at the different options that are there and just maybe try to go for the one that has a little bit less sodium. It's not a huge deal if you, if you use Frank's Red Hot. It's not gonna do anything bad because we're not gonna use so, so much of this. Um, and I'm not going to actually season my chicken right now with any salt or anything because I do have sodium in here. There's 120 milligrams per one teaspoon, which is a lot of sodium for a very small amount. So I do not need to add more. This is gonna flavor the chicken enough. I'm just gonna do a light drizzle. I would say maybe a tablespoon and a half to two tablespoons. I am just kind of spreading the hot sauce all over both sides. I'm flipping the chicken as well. And I do see it's a little bit, um, a little bit bland looking. It's not very coated. So I'm just gonna add another little splash. This is not adding any calories, so don't worry. We're just flavoring this chicken and I'm just kind of spreading it all over. One more thing before I forget. Oh, hi, Sage. My little sagey baby wants to say hello. I'm gonna add just a little touch of water. I would say quarter of a cup for my one chicken breast. Even if I had two chicken breasts, I think that a quarter of a cup would be just fine. Just because I want the chicken, I, we need liquid for the chicken to shred. And that's it, I didn't even use the whole thing. So I would say an eighth of a cup. So I am going to put the top on. I'm gonna to cook this for six 
hours and I'm just gonna kind of check up on it and, and see how it's doing during the cooking process. Because I only have one breast, one chicken breast in here, I do think it's going to cook a lot faster and I want it to shred beautifully. I don't want it to overcook or anything like that. Um, she is super needy, I don't know what's going on. So I wanted to kind of explain to you what I was doing before I took you and showed you what it looks like. So let's see, let's check out what this looks like in the crock pot so you know what to look for when you're making this. All right, so that that is it. You know, there's not much to it. There's just a little bit of a water bed right here, and we flavored the chicken on both sides with the buffalo wing sauce. Now I am just going to put the top on. Excuse my dirty. I clearly use this all the time, and we are gonna cook this for six hours. And I will see you guys once this is done and I shred it. All right, so it has actually been about five hours and I knew it would cook a little bit quicker because I just had one breast, but I don't wanna overcook this. You see how easily it's shredding? It's so juicy. I do not wanna overcook this. So that's why I said to like check periodically. I would check at like the four hour mark and then maybe the five hour mark, but this is beautifully shreddable. And so I am just going to like kind of stir this into the remainder of that sauce slash water that we have. Had, and I'm gonna let this cool overnight because this is gonna be my lunch for tomorrow and I'm gonna be mixing Greek yogurt with this so I don't want to mix Greek yogurt while it's hot because I don't want anything to curdle so I am just going to stir this around put it in the fridge and then I will see you guys tomorrow when I make my lunch hey guys it is lunchtime so it's the next day and I am ready to put together my buffalo chicken salad. I'm gonna put it in a wrap, but don't you worry, I'm gonna kind of talk you through a ton of different options that you can do with just this one recipe. And I'm gonna talk about options that you probably never thought of before. So let's get started with making, we're not even done with the recipe yet, but the chicken, it's been cooling overnight. I made this yesterday, perfect meal prep, so easy, your kids will love it too. So what I'm gonna do before I do anything else is I'm just gonna stir, I have my Greek yogurt here. It's actually the same exact Greek yogurt you saw last video for the crema that I use for the sriracha tacos and this is just gonna add even more protein so if you are someone that struggles with hitting your protein goals or just like getting enough protein in your day this is gonna be the perfect recipe for you because just a, you know a, a heaping tablespoon of this is gonna add a couple extra grams of protein which is just so awesome so I'm just gonna start with I would say let's see like a tablespoon in the rim I can't talk the remainder on my spoon maybe a tablespoon and a half and I can already tell that it's not enough because it's just super dry so I will be adding more I'm just kind of stirring it through I'm just gonna keep adding until I feel like I have a good amount um, of what I like to see like, like the liquid to the chicken ratio but I'm just gonna grab another spoon because I don't want to dip this into my Greek yogurt okay so I'm gonna do I can tell I, I could use a good amount, so I'm gonna do a pretty big spoonful. I would say probably at this point I've used about an eighth of a cup. So I just wanted to kind of show you the consistency and this is just my preference. So please cook yours to your preference, but that is kind of what I'm going for with like the consistency. But we will be adding a stalk of celery so I might have to adjust and add more this recipe is really so easy you just kind of eyeball it and I'm using a different hot sauce and when than what you saw me marinate the chicken in I love this buffalo sauce it's so so good I didn't cook this chicken in this buffalo sauce though because this like I was telling you before this actually does have fat in it so I didn't want to waste this just for cooking it in the crock pot but I'm, I want to taste this and I don't need much buffalo sauce because the chicken has already been soaked in that buffalo sauce before but this is so good it's Moore's original buffalo wing sauce I don't know where I got it I think just the grocery store my my grocery store is Publix um, for a tablespoon it's 15 calories 1.5 grams of fat zero carbs zero protein so not a huge deal there's really only 15 calories in here but fat adds up quickly, so I just like to point out, you know, fat. I love it spicy, so I'm drizzling, I'm drizzling a good amount because I love spice. Um, I would say maybe half a tablespoon I used here, maybe a full tablespoon. So I'm just, oh yes, this is perfect. This is exactly 
the consistency that I was looking for actually, because I really don't want it too wet. We're gonna add a celery. And I wanted to cut it with you, just kind of so you could see. I did. I cut the top off, I cut the bottom off, and I rinsed it. And I might not even use this whole stalk of celery, we'll see, but I am just gonna show you how I chop it. When you are chopping something, hold the knife. You wanna tuck this finger under. You don't wanna do this. You wanna tuck it under and just kind of like seesaw it. And then with this other hand, use this to push the um, the celery and you just kind of want to just boop, seesaw and you'll get really even cuts that way. Practice, go slow. And now I'm just gonna kind of like take a little chunk that I've already cut and cut it into thirds just so that they're tinier. I have to say this because I'm sure people are wondering or maybe you're, the, you're telling yourself, oh, I usually would have added onion. Well, absolutely can. There's nothing wrong with adding a little bit of onion. This show is meant to teach you how to make things a little bit more macro friendly, calorie friendly. If you hear me say macros and you have no idea what I'm talking about, macros just translates into macronutrients and our macronutrients are protein, carbs, and fat. So to make it more macro friendly, when you hear me say that, if you're like, I don't know what she's saying, it just means I'm making it more friendly with the amount of protein, carbs, and fat that go into every meal. And if I were to add onion, onion has a lot of sugar. So that's not a bad thing. I don't want you to think that now you can't use onion, but I don't need it. It's not like I'm gonna eat it and be like, oh, I am missing this onion, you know? And if it's just gonna add sugar and I don't really need it, like I'm, good, I'm cool with that. If I wanted the onion flavor, I could just add onion powder. Um, so I think I'm perfect with just a stalk of celery to get that crunch. I just love that crunch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna taste it to see if I need to adjust anything. Oh, that's so good. Ooh, it's so creamy. Brian's jealous. Do you wanna try it? Sure, I'll try it. Brian doesn't like tuna salad, pasta salad, chickens, no salads because he has an issue with mayo, even though this is not, I know mayo. It's not mayo. But I'll be able oh, to mind to it. But you don't he doesn't like cold salads either. If I like you know it's good. And you don't have to lie. I mean, it's not it, I love it. Mm. If I had something to like eat it with, it would be awesome. So I was gonna tell you guys, I'm making Ooh, this it's spicy. Like a good spicy. Little buffalo chicken. Mm. Um so I am making this into a wrap. So something that Brian might want to stick around in here for, the options that I was gonna tell you guys what you could do with this, why not put this and make a quesadilla? Oh my God, how good would that be? May I have a quesadilla maker, you just need two tortillas or you could do it on the stove top. Um, obviously a salad, but like, I don't want you to think that you have to have salad, so I don't even want to say that. You don't need it, you can have the bread. And I have a couple options. I'm doing a wrap, but you can do a sandwich, you can do it open face. But today, I, it's Flor I'm, I'm in Florida, it's hot outside. I love wraps. I love a good old turkey wrap, chicken wrap, so I think this is gonna be so good in a wrap. And I have a couple options for wraps I wanted to talk you through. So if you go to Walmart, um, or you can get this on Amazon. I find these also at Publix, but I know Walmart has these Joseph's products. So there's Joseph's Pita, which is only 60 calories, 1.5 grams of fat, 10 carbs. I always look at fiber. Please, when you're looking at bread, when I when I look at any ingredient, I'm always looking for fiber because that's gonna help keep me full for a longer period of time and it really aids with the digestion. So this is a great option and this has six grams of protein as well. But I just feel like, to eat a pita, I don't want to stuff it in the pita because sometimes it breaks. I don't want to eat it like a taco. I want like a wrap. So this is just a little too small for me. This is 60 calories though. Then there's another um, Joseph's option that I'm not going to go with. I'm going to tell you why. I have something else I'm going to go with. So this, it's, I don't know how to say it. Lavish, lavash. I don't know really how to pronounce it, but it's really big. This is how big it is. This is the actual size of the wrap. And when you look at nutritional information, don't forget to look at the serving size because the serving size for this product is half of a wrap. So if you're buying this and you think that this whole entire thing is just 60 calories, that's not true. We have to double it. That, but still, even doubling this, 
Uh, it's 120 calories for a huge flatbread. There's one it for, if you wanna eat the whole thing, it's three fat and 16 carbs and 12 protein, but in, orig, I, would have, I would totally eat this, but the reason why I am not is because of the fiber. There is only four grams of fiber in this entire thing. So what I'm gonna use instead are these wraps that I found at, I believe, Fresh Market. I am pretty positive. They're called Tumorose Carb Wise. I got the multigrain and this is 60 calories. So this is the same amount of calories as the pita was, but the reason why I am choosing this smaller wrap over the larger wrap has nothing to do with calories. It actually has everything to do with the fiber because I wanna stay full. So I could have this wrap for half of the calories from this huge wrap, right? But I'm getting eight grams of fiber. I'm getting double the amount of fiber in this and there's only 11 grams of carbs in this, whereas this lavash had 16. So this has more, more carbs, less fiber. I don't, it's a great product. I use these, that's why I have them in my house. I make pizzas with them. I do make wraps with them, but I wanna stay full, that is my goal, and I just wanted to show you and educate you guys on what to look for. Um, I'm gonna go with the wrap with eight grams of fiber here. So, I have a couple things I'm gonna add to this wrap because since this is a soft chicken salad, there is no texture besides the, the little cucumber, uh, not cucumber, besides the cute celery that we added, I want a little bit more of a crunch. So what I thought would be really cool and interesting would be to add, instead of lettuce, I have butter lettuce, yes I have romaine, but I also have shredded green cabbage. This is shredded so it's more fine, so it won't take up as much volume. I really wanna make sure I can um, fill this wrap with as much chicken salad as I can. And it's gonna give me a better crunch than I think even romaine will. And then, just for an additional little crunch and a little sweetness, shredded carrots, why not? I'm thinking, okay, with buffalo chicken, you eat carrots and ranch and you eat celery and ranch and we have celery or blue cheese or whatever, we have celery in here. Why not add some shredded carrot? I think that's gonna be so cool. And one more thing I'm not gonna add in this, but you, I mean, you can, I'm just, I'm not going to. You could add avocado or cheese. Now. I hate blue cheese and I also don't like ranch. So like that's why I'm not adding extra things like that because I personally don't like them. But something that I do like is shredded, or not shredded, but crumbled feta. I think the crumbled feta would be really good in here. Now I am going to start my layering process with a little mixture of the shredded cabbage in the center of the wrap, a little carrot, and, oh, this is so good. It was so tasty. Brian's over there talking, if you can hear him. He said it was so tasty. I'm surprised you liked it. It was really good. I know. I'm gonna fold the sides, and I hopefully didn't overstep it. I'm gonna fold the sides in so they're secure and nothing falls out. And then I'm gonna take the front part and just tuck it under like a little cutie pie burrito. We got some seeping out, but that's okay. Mmm. I keep looking at my fingers, but it's just so tasty. I'm gonna cut it. Mmm. Oh my gosh. I just wanted to show you this awesome view. Oh my God, okay, I'm so hungry, I have to eat. I just worked out, I think I told you. Um, another way that you can eat this that I forgot to mention is if you make this on the weekends and you just have it with like pita chips or any chip, you can eat it at with like those carrot, like those crinkle cut carrot rounds, you could eat it with cucumbers, celery, you could literally have this as a buffalo chicken dip, which I think would be really good, but I am, I just think this is such a great, recipe that you can quickly make that probably your whole house is gonna love. You make buffalo, ver or uh, wait, this is buffalo barbecue versions if you want. Mm. Mm. It's so good. It's so, so good. Well, it's really 
you guys have to make this. Oh my God. Especially just like a quick grab and go, like eating outside. I don't know. It's probably cold where you live, but. Huh. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I have a little bit left in here. I'm just going to eat on the side. And I'm going to just heat up some leftover veggies from last night's dinner. And then I will see you guys really soon because tomorrow for lunch, I'm going to make another summer salad, not chicken, and show you what I do with that. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome to part two of this video. We are going to be making another recipe, another easy summer recipe. This is not something you have to meal prep. This takes just a couple minutes. You probably have a lot of the ingredients already at home. It's so quick. It's so fresh and light for summer too. We're going to be making tuna salad. So it's probably not like a groundbreaking recipe, but the way that I make it is really good. And I have a couple different ways that I want to show you how you can eat it. I'm not going to be eating it in a wrap because that's what I showed with the chicken salad from last, I guess, a couple days ago. This is a couple days later. This is my post workout meal as you can tell I just got done working out so let's just get into it so I love to use these packets of tuna fish for tuna salad versus the jar because there's less of that like water and liquid in here so I don't have to spend so much time really getting all the water out so this is hundred and ten calories for this one pouch it is one gram of fat zero carb and 24 protein so I I do feel that there's water in here it's not super dry so when I open it, I'm just going to make sure I open it over the sink and I'm just going to get all of that water out. There's really not much and I'm going to put it right in my bowl and to add more protein and to make this nice and creamy, we're going to be using our Greek yogurt yet again. So I'm going to do about, I would say maybe two tablespoons of this, a nice heaping a spoonful. So I am going to be adding more, um, more creamy elements. So I don't go crazy with the Greek yogurt. It's so simple. You can whip it up in just a couple minutes. And now I'm going to add just a little bit of yellow mustard for some like acidity and just a little like that, a little squirt of it and some lemon juice. I just like to add juice of one lemon. Again, that acidity I love. All right, so this is nice and creamy right now. It really is nice and a creamy little um, uh, tuna salad, but I want to add some crunch here. So I am gonna do kind of what I did for the chicken, the shredded chicken buffalo salad. I'm gonna add one celery stalk, but this time I actually am going to add some onion. I have some red onion in the fridge. You could use white onion. I'm using red because that's what I have in the fridge. It's a nice like pungent flavor. So I just use about a tablespoon. I don't want too much and I chop it up really nice and fine because I don't want to bite into like a big aggressive piece of that red onion. I just wanted to show you, this is the my consistency right here. Nice and creamy, and but still chunky. So I'm gonna add some pepper. Then I'm not gonna add regular old salt. I'm gonna add celery salt. This is something that my mom has used for all of her salads for like her summary, like cold salads. And I, I added celery, so why not add celery salt? But you do not need a lot because the lemon and the um, the yellow mustard, I think, you know, has that salty flavor very naturally. So I really don't want this to be overly salty at all. So I just add a little drizzle, very, very tiny, tiny little drizzle. Remember, you can always add more. So start start little and then just add more. And if you don't have celery salt, if you don't want to go to the store for celery salt, regular salt's fine. And then this might be a little bit different of a seasoning that you might not have seen in a tuna salad before, but I grew up eating this in my macaroni salads, my tuna salad, like my mom taught me how to make this, cumin. I cannot and I will not have tuna salad without cumin. And if you've never tried it, just trust me, never let you down. 
I love the cumin flavor, so like I add a good amount. Um, if you wanna just start with a little bit and then taste it, and if you're like, oh, I like that, add a little bit more, but it just brings this great complexity to, to the tuna salad and a little bit of like a, like a smoky flavor. It's so, so good. So that is pretty much it. So let me try what it tastes like. It smells amazing. Oh my God. Mm. Oh, it's so good. That cumin, you need it. Please, please for me, I am gonna toast a piece of bread, but not just any bread. I like to have Ezekiel bread because Ezekiel bread, excuse me, Ezekiel bread is sprouted wheat. So I love sprouted wheat bread because when they are making the bread, they wait for the wheat to sprout before they process it into bread. Now this sprouting process, that is what, when you wait for the wheat to sprout, that's where all of the vitamins, the nutrients, the minerals, all that fiber, all the good stuff, that's when it comes out from the sprouting process. Now, traditional breads, white bread, even whole wheat bread, although if it does not say sprouted, that means that the manufacturers, they don't wait until the wheat has sprouted. They just take it before it sprouts and they process it. So I, just to get more of the benefits of this grain, I like to use Ezekiel or just any sprouted bread. So I'm gonna have one slice of nice, warm, toasty Ezekiel bread. And I'm gonna just show you another option that is a very low carb option. Ooh. I like to have my bread a little bit more toasted, so I'm gonna toast it one more time. A low carb option, I'm gonna have this as well, is on a, um, a half of a bell pepper. This is such a great way to really have this be a very, very low calorie meal. It's pretty much all protein, no fat, and what, a, a couple carbs. So I just cut the top off. I'm gonna remove the inside, tap out all those seeds, and I hollowed it out, and I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna put one half to the side because I'm gonna eat one of them with the bread. And I'm just gonna remove this white. It's very bitter, so I'm just gonna remove that. Nice and toasty. I, I want that, that crunch because the salad is very soft. So I am going to just dollop some of this tuna salad into my little red pepper boat. I'm gonna call it, it's like a perfect little boat. And then I'm gonna spread some of it on toasty bread. And this is like the best of both worlds. You get your bread, you get your fiber, you wanna have fiber, that's what keeps us full. If you stay away from the bread because you're scared of carbs, this will not be something that fills you up. And what's the point of like being so hungry all the time? What's the point of after you eat something, thinking about food 30 minutes later? You might as well have the bread, have the fiber, make a better choice with the sprouted wheat and get that fiber. But you don't have to have this combo. I just want to bring you different options. So if this was honestly me eating, I would have two slices of bread, um, but I did wanna show you the option, the low carb option. I've never seen this before. I used to do this all the time. So I just think it's a kind of a cool thing that maybe you have never seen before, so. Okay, so I'm gonna do the avocado first because it's already ready. I already have this in the fridge. It's, I already sliced it up. Take the little slices that I have. I'm just gonna layer it over. I'm gonna add just a tiny sprinkle of salt to the avocado. Whenever I see people eating avocado without salt, I'm like, ah, oh, add the salt, please. Even like a little bit more lemon juice, the avocado shines. You will think of avocado differently if you add salt and add lemon every time. Even just for like a slice, you have to. So that's done, so easy, and then, <laughs> I love this. I say, why not try it? If you don't like it, you can take it right off. Pickled beets on top. I love these because they're marinated in a vinaigrette. So I like these because they're in bigger chunks. And I'm just gonna slice it nice and thin, just so I can like kind of like layer it and almost like scallop it over the top. 
it's so good. It's like that just pickle deep, pickle flavor. I don't know. It's, I just want you to trust me. It's so good. I had it. Oh my gosh. It looks so, so good. This is my little lower carb option with the healthy fat and the avocado on top. I just, you know, crunch it like that. And then mm, the warm and crunchy bread with the beets on top. How pretty, doesn't that look really pretty? It's so, so good. So I'm gonna eat this for lunch. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this episode of Health is Easy. If you have any requests, anything that you want me to make, anything that you want to learn to make, please comment below. Please like and share this video. It would really mean a lot to me so I can keep this going. And I'm gonna go have lunch. I'll talk to you guys later.